non-denominational festive lights all the way. Uh, yep. So this is last year's, I think, or the year before's non-denominational festive lights. Hope I haven't offended anyone there. And uh, yeah, we've seen them before on the channel and um, we've seen them on Pile of Stuff's channel as well. So it's the classic sort of semi-outdoor, pretty robust uh, WS2812Bs encased in uh, these little bubbles here. And you can encase them further if you want, as Pile of Stuff has done. I'll, uh, I'll link up that video. And these have been pretty good, and I've used them before, so no no dramas. But I did buy a heap of these other style lights, which look like this. And they're sort of more indoorsy types. So I'm guessing all we need to do is to plug them in and have them work, right? I mean, what could go wrong? This is a bit of a stripped-down version of what we've just seen. And these are these lights in action, and, yeah, they're pretty much fine. But... This is not what this video is about, really, because there was a lot. Well, there was two days of my wasted time on the way. That's why we have an extra wire coming out of the 3.3 volt uh, system on here. So let's just go through it. Uh, what we've got is we've got uh, five volts coming in and then sitting underneath that. There we go. Underneath the ESP8266 is one of these. And these are pretty handy. So you sit your ESP. O1 or O1S on the top here. This one here happens to be one that we've seen on the channel before because it's one that's got 16 megabytes of flash in there. So I'll, I'll link that up there where I've uh, done some brain surgery on this one. It's running WLED and uh, it just sits on this in this uh, configuration here pointing this way. And you've got your power coming in as you can see there. And then you've got some trickery in here to do uh some level shifting because of the uh and you can probably see uh, a little a dc dc converter here but the esp01 uh s or all esp 8266s prefer 3.3 volts so 3.3 volts coming out and then presumably although i'm not quite sure as we'll discover some level shifting to have the signal coming out of it so that's these ones coming out here going to the um, the actual LED strip itself. Now, plenty of uh, noise online about these LED strips, about people having all sorts of trouble with them. I actually uh, contacted the, um, the seller because I wasn't sure about the polarity. And I think what I've done is I've actually busted two of these. And that led me down a huge rabbit hole, which was to do with maybe this is level shifting, maybe it isn't. Because if we can't drive these with 3.3 volt logic via this yellow wire, then we need to come out of here to a level shifter and then to 5 volt logic to drive the chips that are inside. Let's get a little bit closer down and have a look at how that might work. I wasn't sure of the wiring of those new indoor type LED strips. And so I think. I've probably burnt through a couple of strips figuring it out. And I also went through a lot of different variations of software and hardware, all sorts of things. And I went down a big rabbit hole when it comes to level shifting. Uh, and I've had to do this before. We've seen this on the, uh, on the channel before. So I'll link up that video up here as well. But in order to build a level shifter, there's a classic circuit which I'll put up here, which uh, we have seen before on this channel, and it just relies on a MOSFET. Now, a MOSFET can be one of these guys. In fact, I think that's what I've used before. This is a BS170, and it is in a TO92 package, and uh, it works perfectly fine. But I wanted to make use of maybe one of these. So these guys here, um, yeah, I guess originally I made a lot of these so that I could put LEDs or maybe resist LED combinations on them. But I've also in the past made the odd uh, circuit directly on here. So if I want a low pass filter or a high pass filter, it's pretty easy to put a capacitor or a resistor here and connect them up so that it's a useful little circuit. Um, if I've got a video, I think I do, I will uh, put one up here about when I've used these before. And what I was thinking about this one was, can I use this to make a, um, a level shifter using that circuit and <laughs> this looks like a speck of dust it's not so this is an a03400 
and that is a little MOSFET as well. So um, let's have a look at the pinout of that, and then we'll see how we might be able to get these two together. All right. So this is what I came up with. So that little guy here has this pinout. So there's your gate, source, and drain. It's an N-channel MOSFET. And here is my um, representation of the little PCB there. And what I thought I'd do is put the gate and source across these two here and then the drain to this guy here and have 10 K resistors across these two pads, this one and this one, that leaves all of this free. And then if I put 3.3 volts into here, five volts into here, here's my low voltage signal and here's my high voltage signal, it'll be a pretty useful circuit. So that's what I did with a twist. Um, I'm not sure if we can see that from this angle. Let's get right in close and have a look at it. All right, so what have we got? So uh, here is where you see this little flea, uh, and it's just here. It's very hard to see. And I've got the gate connected to the 3.3 volt side and the source connected to the low voltage signal side. On the 5 volt side here, uh, we've just got a 10K resistor going across to the, side, the high voltage side, and then we've got the high voltage side connected to the drain as per. Again, I'll put up the, uh, the original circuit diagram for this level shifter. What I'd really like to do is maybe put a steady signal across here, something like a square wave, and monitor both the low voltage side and the high voltage side to see if this thing <laughs> is actually working. And uh, yeah, and we'll go from there. Right, what a rat's nest. But buried under here is our um, level shifter. I've got 3.3 volts coming in on one side and 9 volts coming in on the other side. And the signal is just a square wave with this. Uh, well, this is an interesting beast going way back to. I must have made this about three or four years ago. Uh, I'll put a link up to the construction of this guy, very handy signal generator. So that's just one kilohertz going through. Let's see what it looks like on the oscilloscope. Hooray, the new oscilloscope is showing us straight away the difference between the low voltage side and the high voltage side. And sometimes that's all you need. Um, now, bear with me, the signal's as noisy as anything. Probably because a 3.3 signal is coming through on a very dodgy DC-DC uh, DC converter. And also we've got some very long wires and we've got the usual sort of nonsense with a breadboard. But you can clearly see that there's been some signal attenuation there in the level shifter, which is what you want. After that very deep dive, it turns out not to have been the level shifter anyway. It was actually the lights themselves. And um, yeah, I may have been responsible for burning a couple out. Let's look at the difference between the ones that work and the ones that don't work. Yeah, so now I know what this extra wire is for. So I had wired that in so that I can put that uh, level shifting circuit in between this and the LEDs to see if that was a problem. And it wasn't. So these LEDs are completely dead. Uh, and so even though that this is pumping out a lovely signal for them, we're not getting anything at the other end. So um, let me just, I'll just put that safely in there so they don't touch. Let me just get rid of that. I do have it in mind to maybe, um, you know, like the old Christmas lights, sometimes if you had one bad bulb, the whole lot was bad and you had to find it. It might be the same. I may have burnt out something that's maybe recoverable. So um, that's in the center. There's our VCC, and here's our ground, and there's our lights. Very pretty. So let's um, let's get a freshie out um, and see. So here's another fresh packet that's um, that's in that same lot. So if we take that out. Move these guys out of the way, and we'll put these guys in, and see if it's. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna to have to test all of these. Gosh, it's hard to put those. Here we go. Yeah, so I'm gonna call that one uh, working as well. Hmm, what a journey as usual. Um, what I'd like to do, yeah, as I said, with the ones that maybe aren't working is to strip back some of these 
maybe if you cut off five at the end, will they work? Is there some uh, bulb in there that I've blown or some? Because inside each of these little beads is a WS2812 uh, chip, which I, <laughs> I may have completely blown up in trying my uh, experiments on it. So, yeah, I mean, it's been... Um, it's sort of been good. It's been a couple of days of frustration. I've learnt a little bit more about level shifting, which is always probably good. I've got to use the oscilloscope, which is good, but I'm going to call that the circuit working for this week. We'll see you next time.